I was 17 years old the first time I stepped into the wilderness solo with a bivy pack and bow in hand. I could not have foretold how this experience would change the course of my life. The pungent smell of boot crushed sage, stunning mountain vistas, the soft rustle of aspen leaves and a gentle wind heightens my senses and stirs deep emotions in my soul. It is my time to wander the wilderness, sustained by the contents of the pack on my back, seeking out private solitude. It is good to be back in the mountains, where the only limitations that are drawn are the unit boundaries, ambition, and determination. The mountains do not care about your success or failure, your safety or your survival. It does not matter the thickness of your wallet, only the size of your heart and the amount of grit you possess. It is truly a level playing field for every man. The experience is yours to make. It is this missing piece that makes me whole again. A week in the mountains heals the soul. As John Muir once said, the mountains are calling and I must go. For me, really there is no choice. It has been a long off season. It is good to be back, bow in hand, once again reconnecting with my roots. The dormant predator awakened. here in Colorado. We've probably seen oh, 18 or 20 bucks in this basin we're in. Most of them are all up the head of the basin, but we got one that's bedded right below some rim rock. Absolutely perfect spot for a stock. So it's not the biggest one in the basin, but it's a nice big four by three with double eye guards. He's probably 26 or 27 inches wide. Like I said, an ideal spot for a stock. So we're gonna drop down off these cliffs in here, make a way off there and try and make it happen. What an absolutely perfect scenario. Came right over the top on that buck. He had no idea I was there. I spotted an antler tine coming up from behind a rock. I just had to maneuver around to get this one rock out of my way and I had a clear shot at his body. And I was about halfway through getting around that rock and I felt the wind start to eddy. And I was like, oh no. So I just stood real still and I saw his antler start to fidget like this. And I was like, uh oh, here it comes. And uh, he stood up and took a few st quick steps forward and there was a big bush that was covering almost his whole body. I could see about a softball size hole into his vitals and uh, I elected to take the shot because I figured I could sneak it in there and I knew that as soon as that wind touched him again he was going to be out of there. And uh, wouldn't you know it, my arrow deflected off a branch and it was stuck in the ground sideways there. That was about a I don't know, 15 or 18 foot shot. It was, I was right on top of that deer. That was so cool. But, uh, well, it's just opening day. We have like nine more days after today. So plenty of opportunities, although that kind of opportunity is hard to come by. Got two bucks bedded over on the side hill down here, a four by three and a nice four by four. The four by three is closer to us, maybe a better position for a stock, but I really want that big four by four. So we're gonna go give him a try first. If it doesn't pan out, then we'll have a fallback plan and come back on that four by three. After blowing out the big four by four, I refocused my efforts on my second choice buck. As I stepped off another section of rim rock, a small buck exploded out of his bed, tucked under the rock literally three feet below me. My next step would have been on his back. At just 15 feet, the buck still couldn't figure out what it was that disrupted his afternoon nap. It's close-up experiences like this that make all of the preseason hard work worthwhile. 
I'll use memories from this and other hunts to sustain my spirit through the long winter months. Fear of being spotted by the doe, bedded below the buck, keeps me from being able to slip up to the edge of the rock. feel snake bit. I got down, I was on top of those deer for over an hour on that rock there and maneuvering around trying to get in position. I was on the only spot in this whole mountain that didn't have any rocks. I had little pea-sized rocks I was throwing at that doe trying to get her to move out of the way or stand up or do something to get that buck going. Finally, that buck, I saw antler tines come out on the right side. So I start getting in position for a shot at, for the right. And then 20 seconds later, here he comes out on the left. And uh, so I started to, he spotted me, bolted, ran out about 20 yards. I start drawing my bow and I hear a little tick and I felt my arrow move on my string. And I looked down and I saw the ear of my knock roll off my finger. I had half a knock. It's heck of a time for an equipment failure. I must've banged one of them when I was going down there or something. And, cracked it because I uh, boy oh boy what a absolute heartbreaker had a probably 22 23 yard shot broadside and off he went this is really getting discouraging hi we're on our way back to our base camp this morning we had glassed up a bunch of bucks in the bowl probably four or five of them some nice bucks but they all bedded in the timber and I lost one I couldn't find them and we we're almost back to uh, the ridge to go over the ridge and I looked down and spotted uh, where he had bedded and he's probably been laying there for at least three hours so he's in a perfect spot right now so I want to hit get it going and make sure I can get in on this guy before he gets up begin to put into words my disappointment, discouragement. We're now, I think, seven days into our nine day hunt. And uh, I've had some great, great opportunities and my luck just is, it's in the tank. I got right in on that buck. I threw every rock in my pocket trying to get that buck to stand up except for one. I had one more shot and I figured, well, I better make this one land close so he gets up. I threw, I might, might have landed a little too close. So he stands up. I was expecting him to be looking away 
at the direction the rock landed and instead he stood when he stood up he was looking straight ahead and he caught my movement about the last quarter of my draw and I I finished my draw and he was hitting the gas and I shot and I went right behind him and what can I say he saw the deer he is a bomber the absolute bomber and that thing what an incredible situation. He was bedded facing away the whole time. I had good gusts of wind to help me to ease in on my stock. Just an amazing situation, you know. Stick bow hunting is supposed to be tough, but is it supposed to be this tough? Saturday, the second to last day of our trip here. We've got three bucks bedded up in three different locations. So we have three different potential opportunities. Two four by threes and a four by four. So uh, it's probably about nine o'clock. We're gonna we've got him settled in here, and we're gonna go start this stock here. It's a long one, so. The first two stocks didn't play out, so I was left with what I felt would likely be my last stock of the season. We had been hunting this basin hard and I knew it was unlikely any of the deer would return after I'd finished clearing out the basin again. As if I needed any further pressure, I was pretty sure my tireless cameraman, Steve Tadden, would mute me if I blew another gimme opportunity. I began the next stalk, feeling all the pressure of the last week on my shoulders. that out it must have been when I saw him run off it was about like that through through his back there so it must have pushed out we're about 40 yards down the trail here and uh, boy it's oh yeah I think I see some bubbles here that's a good sign we're on here oh, there's a lot of blood there more blood here Keep landing right here more blood more blood here oh yeah nice stripe right here we should be down here pretty Oh, there he is! All right, man, right there. Oh, sweet, man. He went down right after I lost him. Probably not 40 yards further. I can't wait to get my hands on him here. Boy, I tell you, holding this buck in my hands is a huge reward for the amount of effort that we've put out. We've been hunting between 12 and 13,000 feet for the last eight days here. We have one more full day of hunting. I've had a number of blown opportunities that any normal bow hunter would give their front teeth for. And uh, it's just excruciatingly painful to experience those. You know, executing a good shot, having my arrow deflected, not once, but twice. And just out here pounding the hills, hours and hours behind the binoculars and spotting scope, looking at bucks, planning stalking routes, having the wind give us up. You know, I, this is, it's been, a, it's been a challenging hunt to say the least. Just total physical exhaustion at the end of every day. And to end the hunt, you know, on the eighth day here, one more full day of hunting, I, I was really seriously wondering if I was gonna be eating my tag and I was not feeling very good about it. I was, it was really tough. This, this hunt's been extremely challenging, physically and mostly mentally, you know, not to leave anything out on the physical end. It's been, it's been punishing, but the, 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 just the emotional and the mental challenges of a backcountry hunt and then to have so many good opportunities at such big bucks 
bucks of this size and, and even bigger bucks and to come up on the short end of the stick just holding this guy in my hand man I tell you what this is like sitting on cloud nine